Today we're going to talk about making too much money, AI, and breaking into the game dev industry. Earlier this week, I did a video about breaking into the game dev industry with what I think is some pretty good advice. I'll link that down below if you want to go check it out. But there were a lot of questions, and today I want to answer those questions. The first one is great. It says, I love the suggestions. My issue is slightly different though. At the moment, my real job is too high paying to even contemplate taking a game dev job, given the starting salaries I'm seeing discussed. It would be too much of a financial hit for my family. Do you have any recommendations other than creating stuff on the side or areas to focus on that might help me jump past that starting rung and get to a more medium level position that's closer to what I'm currently making? So then it finishes off with, I'm honestly thinking thinking I'm personally out of luck as an accountant slash auditor, not trained as a programmer. So I'm also fighting that stigma if I were to try to swap to the industrial industry as an in initial stepping stone. But any suggestions would be appreciated. So my suggestion here is, well, this is the same problem that I ran into when I wanted to get out of game programming full-time and start doing YouTube and talking about and teaching game programming. There's a big pay drop um, initially, but my recommendation is that if you're in a position that you can get back into, if you've got a job that you can easily go replace, you know, if something goes wrong, I would go for finding a game dev job that's in the industry, even if it pays 30, 40, 50% less for at least a short period of time. Even if you can only commit to it for three or six months, if you can cut down expenses drastically for those three or six months, save up a little bit in advance and then make that jump, you can probably get into the industry and start growing that salary. You'll have to be kind of actively forcing yourself to grow that salary through either promotions internally or new positions going from one job to another. That second job, I would expect to see a, a anywhere from a 30 to 100% pay increase, really depending on how low you go in at the beginning and what the options are. But you should definitely see a big jump from position number one to position number two. And you can probably do that within the six to nine month period. Sometimes I see people do it in three. Um, other than that, you could also go into the game development side and then do some contracting on the side to help kind of make up for that lost money until you start to build up the skills and the kind of uh, the perceived value so that you can get paid more. It's really the actual value so that you can get paid more as a programmer. Now, when it comes to getting into the industrial side, that's also a great option. You can do some game development type stuff in the industrial markets using things like Unreal and Unity to build out applications that are used in big warehouses, that are used in at lots of other non-gaming applications. There are more than I can list off and they pay really well. If you're doing something like that, by the way, drop a comment and just leave a little support. Let everybody know that these kinds of positions are out there and uh, maybe what it is that you do gives people some ideas. Let's go into question number two. Don't you need a bachelor's degree in computer science or something if you want to be a programmer at a company like Naughty Dog, Bethesda, or Santa Monica Studios? I'm still working towards my associate's degree. Just how much knowledge do you need? And I think that this question is great because it hits on two things. One, degrees, and two, the part that actual ma actually matters, which is the knowledge. In my experience, most of the game programmers that are hiring, the leads, the producers, and everything else, they don't really care at all about your degree. Uh, most of the expert and star programmers learned how to code either on their own or in college a long time ago, learning things that are 90 to 95% not really relevant to what they do. There's some fundamental stuff that you'll learn in school, but the majority of the actual coding stuff you have to learn outside on your own. You're very rarely gonna learn most or even a majority or a large amount of that at school. You have to kind of learn that on your own. So those companies generally, at least in my experience, don't care too much about it at all. The people who do tend to care are recruiters who are non-technical, who can sometimes be that first stepping stone. So if you have no experience, having a degree or a certification or something like that can help you get past those people. My recommendation though is try to get in directly with another developer or programmer, talk to them about the positions and they can kind of help you get through there. I highly recommend knowing somebody at a company if you're applying there. It, 
obviously not, not not an easy thing to do, but it's the best way to get in. Um, a degree isn't going to help nearly as much. Now, as far as how much knowledge is needed, you need to be able to actually do the job. That's kind of the core thing. If you're applying for a junior level position, you need to be able to read and understand um, at least most code, not not the most advanced stuff, but you need to be able to read and understand the majority of code given enough time looking through it and be able to fix minor bugs, add small features and things like that when you're coming in as a junior developer. If you're coming in higher, obviously it's going to be more skills, but you should be able to do at the very least that. Next question. One question, which developers are needed more in the game industry's job market, Unreal devs or Unity devs? And this is, um, I'm not sure what the actual answer to this is. My guess is that it's probably somewhere around equal. I, I might see a bit more Unity jobs than Unreal jobs, but if you're working on console games and AAA games, I would expect to see a bit more um, Unreal jobs than Unity jobs. So more Unity jobs probably in general and probably more AAA jobs in Unreal. That said, I think it's probably pretty even either way. I don't think that there's a huge advantage um, on either side for for the industry. So if you want to do either one, I'd say go with whatever you're best at or even more important, go with whatever the company that is building the thing that you want to work on is using. If they're using Unreal, use Unreal. If they're using Unity, use Unity. Another question, do I need to learn the particular a particular skill in game dev or just learn general game dev skills? What I mean by a particular skill is something like environment art, lighting, UI design, level design, animation, programming, etc. Most of the time, you're going to want to have, yes, one of those skills, and you're going to want to have it down pretty good. Um, programming, I think, is the easiest to find a job for. Design is probably the hardest to find a job for and the hardest to kind of prove out because you've got to actually work on some projects where you can show some design work. And then art, I have absolutely no idea about but if you want to be an artist, it's a very different skill set than being a programmer and even a different skill set than being a designer. Though I have met some people who are great at all of them. I would recommend, though, focus on one, get really good at that, and be okay at the others. And that's usually enough to get you into the position. Let's go on to AI. AI. It says, hey, I'm curious about your thoughts about ChatGPT and how it could affect game dev jobs in the years to come. After seeing some of the code ChatGPT can create, it's almost depressing thinking about the possibility of being replaced by an AI that could seemingly do the job faster and better than I would ever be able to. It'd be, go it'd be awesome if you made a little video going over your thoughts on the whole situation. So... I think that AI is going to have a drastic impact over game development, software development, and probably just the, the world as a whole. Every company is now focused on building out new AI stuff, even Unity. We had a little insider talk where they showed off some cool AI stuff that they've been focusing on. And it seems like everybody's been doing this stuff for quite a while. They're just now starting to talk about it because they're making some big breakthroughs. Personally, I love using AI for my own coding stuff. I use um, GitHub Copilot now. It's just on by default and I start typing and it auto completes most of the things that I want to do. And I use ChatGPT now to write code that I'm not sure how to write or to come up with ideas for code that I'm just kind of loosely bouncing around in my head. I f feel like it's like having another pair programmer just kind of sitting there that I can bounce ideas off of and that soon it's going to start replacing other programmers. I think that there will be less of these positions available or maybe not less necessarily like a drop, but a drop in the growth of the number of programming positions and other types of jobs like that. The next question though is very related. It says, what's the future of junior positions for both artists and game devs with the emerging power of AI. I'm super, super excited to study game design and do my projects, but by the time I graduate, AI seems, AI products seem to overpower even senior developers. How are, or so, so how are people supposed to get on board with such a powerful and productive competitor, which doesn't even require minimum wage? I am concerned. Well, yeah, and you should be, but really the solution is to just start using it yourself. You want to be that junior programmer that's using ChatGPT and all the other AI advancements to be able to do the things that as a junior programmer, I used to have to go line up out in, in front of some senior developer's office and wait 
wait my turn to go ask them the question and hope that I understood and try not to bother and waste too much of their time. Now you can just do that with a chat bot and get a lot of those answers, get the code, and you're not you're not burning anybody's time. You're, you're saving every, saving the company money, saving yourself time, and kind of building things up. I, my general recommendation, though, if you want to get into the industry, um, start diving into the AI stuff, start using it, and be ready to talk about it when you go into interviews. Be ready to talk about how chat GPT um, and AI stuff is helping you get better, how it's making you a better programmer, and how it's helping you solve problems that used to be very, very difficult to solve and now can be done by a junior programmer. And that's kind of what I think the power is. You're going to be able to do things that you used to have to have a lot of training for and a lot of experience, and you're going to be able to figure those things out much quicker. All right, if you got questions, drop them down below. Otherwise, please hit the thumbs up button, like, subscribe, share, and I'll see you later. Bye.